Today, an interstate duel between the Kent State Golden Flashes and the number three ranked Buckeyes, next on the Big Ten Network. Well, it's been cloudy the last few days here, but right on cue, the sun has come out. It's going to be a beautiful day here as the Kent State Golden Flashes come to Columbus to take on the third ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Along with Coach Glenn Mason, I'm Mark Neely, and my partner here, as a deep connection to both of these schools playing here today. He played here at Ohio State for Woody Hayes. Then when his playing days ended, he becomes an assistant coach here at Ohio State. And he gets an opportunity to make the jump to being a head coach. And where does he land? Kent State. He was announced as the Kent State head coach in April of 1986. Spent a couple of seasons at the helm there for the Golden Flashes. So you have no question a connection to both these schools. Well, Mark, I've been taking grief all afternoon here in the press box. He's got a maize and blue tie on. My friends think that's for Michigan. They're wrong. I got a gray suit, maize and blue for Kent State. I'm neutral. Yeah, mixed your color as well. Well, let's talk about the back because there's, I'm sure, quite a few kids, not only for Kent State, but in the back, would have loved to have played in the Big Ten at a school like Ohio State. But many of these MAC players that got overlooked by BCS schools turned out to be pretty good football players. No doubt about it, Mark. You know, when I left Ohio State and went to Kent State, I kept finding myself saying, you know, there's a lot of players in the MAC should be in the Big Ten, and a lot of players in the Big Ten should be in the MAC, and that's not a shot at the Mid-American Conference. It's just that it's overshadowed by the Big Ten, but a lot of good football players there. Well, speaking of the Big Ten, when the season began, the Ohio State Buckeyes ranked third in the land as they take the field here today at the Horseshoe. Great defense, but it was Michigan and Wisconsin that everybody was talking about preseason. Is Ohio State one of the surprise teams in the Big Ten? Well, Mark, I've been asked that question a lot. And to me, the biggest surprise in the Big Ten right now, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Not that they're good, but where they're sitting right now, number three in the country, there's no one betting against that they won't end up in the national championship game. Well, they're taking on Kent State, the Golden Flashes. And if they're to have a chance today, they look to their diminutive but very talented running back, Eugene Jarvis, listed at five feet inches, five Five, five, 170 pounds. Mark, and how those sports information directors are, if they're listing him at 5'5", five, five, he's probably 5'3". They take little guys and list them big and heavy guys and list them light. Well, he scored 10 touchdowns this year. He has scored in every game, and he is fifth in the nation, averaging 143 yards per game. Kent State in Columbus to take on Ohio State next. Over 100,000 here at the Horseshoe in Columbus. Boy, it's turned out to be a beautiful day as Kent State is going to take on the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. This is the highest-ranked team that Kent State has ever faced. And here come the captains for the coin toss. Barton, Johnson, Freeman, Laurinaitis. I'll tell you, Mark, it doesn't get any better than this, does it, huh? Beautiful. Big Ten football, beautiful day, packed house, great band. Two good football teams. Kent State coming in at 3-3. Three and three. And Ohio State, of course, undefeated at 6-0. and oh. And the coin toss. And Kent State has won the toss. You know, Mark, I think that's Ike Kelly is the honorary captain out there. Mm -hmm. Great linebacker. Look at Doug Martin, the head coach at Kent State. Fourth season, he's done a terrific job with that program. He surely has. He's turned him into a legitimate, consistent contender. And the Kent State Golden Flashes, and there's Jim Tressel. Of course, he has a national championship, played for the title last year in his seventh year already now here in Columbus. The third member of our broadcast team down on the sidelines. Here's Rob Harley. Rob? Hey, Mark. Thanks a lot. I'll tell you what, it was interesting talking to Coach Trestle yesterday. I asked him his feelings on playing a midseason non-conference game against an overmatched uh, team at Kent State. And he said, listen, Rob, I hate these games. And I was, we all started laughing because he said, listen, it's hard enough to get these kids focused in every week on the game plan at hand each week and be consistent. He goes, I don't need any extra pressure trying to motivate these kids to play. Mace, I know being at Minnesota, you guys played Kent State last year. I'm sure you went through the same thing. Well, I didn't feel exactly the way same uh, Jim did. 
His comments yesterday remind me what Coach Paterno said before they played Florida and International in the opening game, that he was never more nervous before a game than that one, and we all chuckled. Now the Buckeyes, they're going to get the football first to begin today. Of course, Ohio State, the scarlet tops, gray pants. And the Kent State Golden Flashes, white tops with the gold and navy blue pants. And Nate Reed, sophomore, ready to get us underway from Columbus. Ray Small, back deep, and the squid kick picked up at the 14-yard line by Small. Sends it to the 30, still on his feet, and brought down right near the 30-yard line. And that's where the Buckeyes will begin, a 16-yard return for Ray Small. And Todd Beckman, quarterback, 6-0 as a starter for the Buckeyes. 14 touchdown passes, four of those came in one game against Northwestern. And the Buckeyes... Come out in the shotgun. Beckman rolls right. Throws to the far side, and it's complete. Murray on the coverage. Dane Sanzenbacher on the reception, and that's a pickup of 15 on first down. Look at the backs and receivers for Ohio State. Brian Rubisky leads the Big Ten, averaging 99 yards receiving per game. On the offensive line, they're all 300 pounders. And Kirk Barton, the right tackle, one of the Ohio State captains. The first and 10 on the 46 yard line. And Wells the carry. Straight ahead for three yards. Defensively for Kent State. On the line, Kevin Hogan led the team last year with seven and a half sacks. He's the team leader this year so far with three. The linebacker Cedric Maxwell is a junior from Tampa, Florida, leading their team with 47 tackles. And in the secondary, free safety Brian Lanehart has a couple of interceptions and two fumble recoveries already on the year. Second down and seven after a gain of three ball near midfield. More Beanie Wells gets by one tackler, but not a second. Dan Hartman able to bring him down. He's going to lose a couple there. Mark, it's interesting. Beanie Wells is a really good size for running back. He's bigger than seven starters on the Kent State defense, and he's the running back. Beanie listed at 6'1", 235 pounds. The sophomore from Akron, Ohio, Garfield High School. A third down and seven. And he got back near the line of scrimmage on the last carry, and Beckman... Looks to throw, goes across the middle, complete near the first down at the 43-yard line. Is Brian Hart line, Derek Burrell, weak side linebacker, tackles him, but not before Ohio State's able to move the chains, a gain of eight. You know, I thought Beck did a good job here. He sits in there, he's under some pressure, but he keeps his eyes downfield, doesn't get happy feet, puts the ball right on the money, first down. Ryan Hardline, sophomore from North Canton, Ohio, having a nice season, three touchdowns. Tight end Ballard goes in motion to the far side. Play fake. They set up the screen pass. Hartline uses a block, cuts it outside. He's across the 30, brought down inside the 20-yard line at the 19. Jamison Cons, the strong side linebacker with the tackle, but not before a 23-yard gallop there on that screen pass. Mark, we've seen this play different ways, but this is nothing more than that fire screen, jailbreak, whatever you want to call it. It's really designed to go back inside. Kent State had it pretty well defended. Hartline took it back outside. Big game. So the ball on the Kent State 18-yard line, and here are the Buckeyes on their first drive into the red zone. There is Maurice Wells into the game, getting his first carry. Not much there. We'll probably Jim see Trestle. three different running backs today. Well, Jim Trestle was very clear. You know, so much is said about Beanie Wells, and then everybody's really impressed with Brandon Sane, who's back uh, again this week. And he was quick to say, don't forget about Mo Wells. He's an awfully good running back. He's been good for us over the years, and we'll need him down the stretch. 
Maurice Wells Jr. 195 pounder from Jacksonville Florida lost one second down at 11. Beckman throws across the middle and wide open as a receiver Sandsenbacher Maxwell makes the tackle a gain of about four. Well, it's going to bring up third and long. Golden Flash is mixing up pretty good defensively. They got up there and showed blitz and then backed out on the snap, forced Beckman to throw the ball underneath, and they'll tackle him. They'll give him that one all day to put him in the third and long. Now the Kent State defense faces an important play. Pete Rexis, his fourth season as the defensive coordinator at Kent State. Third down at six. They go with five receivers. Empty backfield. And Beckman delivers quickly caught Hartline into the end zone touchdown Buckeyes 14 yard touchdown reception 6 nothing Ohio State for Beckman his 15th touchdown pass of the season and Hartline catches his fourth of the year and an early strike for the Buckeyes Mark Kent State was misaligned there they didn't have that receiver covered up Beckman saw it he threw it to him Touchdown. The extra point tacked on and on their first possession. The Buckeyes move down the field and score seven. The touchdown pass to Brian Hartline, the sophomore from North Canton. Seven nothing Buckeyes early. On their first possession, the Buckeyes go 69 yards, pick up the score. A touchdown pass to Brian Hartline, and there was a problem defensively but here, Glenn. Here's what Beckman saw. There's Hartline. There's the defender. Too much room in between. They missed the line versus the spread set. And Hartline with the catch and run. 14 yards into the end zone. And Brian advancing back deep for Kent State. Be taken at the two by McBride. It's undercut at the 26 yard line. A return of 24 yards. And Julian Edelman, junior quarterback, Juco transfer, to take the field for Kent State. Edelman from Redwood City, California, transferred from College of San Mateo. A guy who will run as much as he will throw. He had a Total 135 rushing yards at Kentucky earlier in the season. And he goes play fake, throws on first down to the near side. Defender fell down, caught at the 49 yard line of Ohio State by Phil Garner. A gain of 25. How about that, sports fans, huh? Garner, sophomore from Coral Springs, Florida. Ball hung in the air a while, but the defender hit the turf. Now the Washington covering. That play right there where the ball's underthrown on a takeoff and the receiver comes back is almost impossible to defend. So here are the golden flashes on their second offensive play in Ohio State territory. Fake the handoff, and here's Edelman who wants to run. Washington comes up, puts a lick on him, and he'll only gain about a yard. Cameron Hayward and Russell on the tackle, a gain of one. Watch out for Eugene Jarvis. We've talked about him. Great running back. Ten touchdowns on the year. Their offensive line. Joe Marify makes his 34th consecutive start playing right guard. There's Eugene Jarvis, native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he has scored in every Kent State game so far this year. Second down to die. Edelman. Pass deflected, but still caught by a Kent State receiver. Rashad Tooks. Coleman brings him down right near the first down marker. A gain of 10. And Trestle's on the sideline. I've been here before, and he's saying, you got to be kidding me. A hand on it from Cameron Hayward, but it found its way to Rashad Tukes, and it is a first down for Kent State. Hayward goes to the sidelines. First and 10, Kent State. And Jarvis will get his first carry, a nice hole. He's across the 30. Down at the 25 yard line before Laurinaitis got him from behind. A gain of 13 and another Golden Flesh's first down. Impressive thus far, mixing it up good. I like the game plan. And, you know, going back to some of the comments that Doug Martin, the Kent State Height coach, said earlier in the week, I think we're misconstrued. He thought P. 
people thought he was saying he wasn't going to come down and compete in this game. He's going to try his best, but he's going to play a lot of players. And Doug Martin saying that second teamers will see a lot of time, but primarily just to keep his first teamers fresh and give them a chance in this game. Right now, his offense driving first and 10 at the Buckeyes 25. Edelman out of the shotgun. Looks to the near side. Now will throw up to the 22. Chimde Chekwa there on the coverage, and the receiver was out of bounds. So it's an incomplete pass. The Ohio State defense. Vernon Golds to the junior from Detroit, three sacks. He has a touchdown return in the Northwestern game on a fumble recovery. Linebackers, boy, they're outstanding. Larry Grant leads the team with seven and a half tackles for loss. Great secondary. Malcolm Jenkins, first team All Big Ten last year. He has a couple of picks here in 2007. Second down and 10. Edelman, near side, flagged down, pass caught at the 23-yard line. Chekwa there with a couple of other scarlet shirts to bring down Robinson. What a hold against Kent State. But to this point, I don't like the play calling here. Oh, I'm During the play, holding, 66 offense, 10 yards, previous spot. With big first time. David Whitvote, our referee. There's the hole in your screen. Is pushed down Larry Grant. That was a tackle. After the penalty marked off, second down and 20 for the Ohio State 35. Counter coming back to the near side. Down at the 32, Freeman, the Ohio State tackle after Jarvis gains three. Our Suzuki keys of the game. Interesting here. Kent State wants to play, play the game. Play the game. Don't get caught up in how big the stadium is and the band and the TV. All it says play the game. And offensively against this defense before the day's over. They're going to have to use some smoke and mirrors. Defensively is turnovers. If they don't turn the ball over, they'll win. Second thing, set the tone. You're the number three ranked team in the country. Third down and 17. Edelman weaves through traffic. He still has it. He's going to come towards the near side, stumbling, and then gets knocked down from behind. Dropped for a loss back at the 37-yard line by Rob Rose. He loses five, fourth down. Edelman, a lot of time running everywhere here. Well, I like his poise, and he's not rattled, but one thing he's got to know about the Ohio State defense, if you could say there's one strength they have, they can run. That posse is on its way, baby, and they can run fast. Well, on fourth and 22 with the ball at the Ohio State 37, Kent State is going to go for it here. And it'll be the quick kick. Edelman punts it, rolling around the 10-yard line. And it's going to get down to around the 12. Credit Doug Martin and his staff. No one saw that coming. 25-yard punt. It was effective, though. Ohio State ball when we return. It's the new Midway through this first quarter, the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes leading Kent State 7 to nothing, And Ohio State has possession, but he, impressed by the play calling. They... Gold Flash is able to move the football. They caught everybody sleeping on that uh, quick kick. Starting from the 13, it's Maurice Wells across the 15-yard line. 34, Maurice Wells along here. The principal edge of the game. Defense. Good defense is going here today. Defense versus defense. Defense wins ball games. And State, number one in the back. It's Ohio State. Not only number one in the Big Ten, but in many categories, number one, two, or three nationally. In different defensive departments. Gain of two on that carry by Mowell. Second down and eight at the 15. Play fake. Beckman going deep down the near side. He's got a man wide open. Caught at the 42-yard line and up to the 48. Rico Murray there on the coverage. Brandon Sane. We mentioned earlier we're going to see carry the ball, I'm sure, at some point today. But the true freshman, wide open along the near sideline. Well, he's got all the time in the world, and no one's even around him when he throws the ball. And the report on old Brandon saying is 
Not only is he a great football player, he is fast, fast, fast. And he even had his knee scoped on September 21st, and this is his first game back. For the ball at midfield, first down for the Buckeyes. And Beckman to throw again, but lots of time. He's going for Rabisky. Ball hangs up, deflected, incomplete at the 14-yard line. Junior Rico Murray on the coverage for the Golden Flashes. Let's get an update down on the field, see how things are going down there with Rob. Hey, you know, guys, when we talked to Tressel this week, he actually told us that Beckman they encouraged him not to come to school at Ohio State because they already had Troy Smith and Justin Zwick. They said, hey, listen, one of these guys is going to be a great quarterback, if not both. Maybe you should look elsewhere. And Beckman said, listen, I want to be a Buckeye. And Tress said, well, in that case, let's go ahead and gray shirt you and have you wait two years to play. And he waited it out now as a fifth-year junior getting some snaps. 23-year-old Todd Beckman. Junior from St. Henry, Ohio, and that little town is a story in itself. Beckman finds Rubisky this time on the near side, cuts it in, and we'll get to the 41 yard line near the markers. He gains nine. Well, that's an interesting story. I never had that problem, encouraging guys not to come <laughs> and they're still coming. That's a, that's a tough recruiting deal there, Mark. People may be familiar with the term red shirt, but we need, probably need to explain gray shirt where he comes to the school. He takes less than 12 hours of class load, and he's considered a gray shirt. Well, he's not a full-time student. He's not on scholarship. He can't practice. He can't travel, do all those things. And then he fully enrolls the next uh, uh, January second second quarter would be here at high state out of the eye Johnson is the fullback carry Mo Wells, but he's hit by Moss Stefan Moss right at the line of scrimmage if you had one play that you would say was Jim Tressel's bread and butter play over the years it's that one right there the off tackle power of a two back set and everybody blocks down fullback kicks out backside guard pulls around for the front side linebacker and if you're better than they are Move the ball. Well, fourth and less than a yard, really. It's fourth and inches, but Ohio State, Jim Tressel not wanting to gamble here. AJ Trapasso come on to punt it away. Well, Jim over the years hasn't lost many games that he shouldn't because he plays it by the book. He knows he's got better people unless he makes a coaching mistake to turn the ball over. He's probably going to win this game, so he's not going to take a chance giving him field position. John Drager with the fair catch at the nine. 32-yard punt, no return. Golden Flashes have it when we come back. For in our Big Ten Network studios, want to update you on Michigan and Purdue. Mario Manningham back from suspension. 24-yard TD catch from Brian from Chad Henney. Third TD of the year for him. It's 7 up. Here's a look from the end zone at Eugene Jarvis. He has to look way up at his line and the rest of his teammates. Stutter stepping. It's up to the 14-yard line. Tackled by Malcolm Jenkins. A pickup of five for Eugene Jarvis. Again, he's listed at 5'5", 170 pounds. I don't know how tall he is, but he can move his feet. I can tell you that. Just a little counter uh, type of off-tackle power play. And... That's a good play for a guy like that because he can get his feet moving and get north and south real quick. Jarvis went to Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh. He's a sophomore. Second down and five for Kent State 14. More Jarvis able to get out of one arm tackle attempt. He's on his feet. A first down across the 25 to the 27 yard line before a Malcolm Jenkins tackle. Well, a couple of other games going on right now. The Big Ten Network, alternate games from Ann Arbor, Purdue, Michigan, Minnesota, Northwestern on DirecTV. You can find them on those channels, Dish Network, as well as AT&T Universe. Three games on the Big Ten Network at this moment. Eugene Jarvis, 230 yards rushing and a couple of TDs in their game at Ohio earlier in the season. So he can rack up the numbers. Comes in fifth in the nation in yards per game rushing. Throws to the far side. Catch, but an immediate tackle by Donald Washington. Edelman better watch that one. He gets the speed of this defense going that late out in the flat. He does that again. It's going the other way for seven. And Eric Muldrow was the receiver. Mark, what does a good football player look like? Interesting question. Well, what my, does one look like? My point being, this little guy at running back against everybody in the stadium already knows that guy's a good football player. Second down at seven. 
Running left this time, has a blocker, gets near the marker. Up near the 40-yard line, Malcolm Jenkins brings him out, a gain of nine. And looks like a first down, and it will be for the Golden Flashes. Well, Kent State moved the football on their first possession. Drove to the Ohio State 37. You look back early in the year, Mark, this Kent State team moved the ball up and down the field against a good Kentucky team out of the Southeast Conference, but they destroyed themselves by fumbling the ball, turnovers. Kent State actually got to the 25 of Ohio State, a penalty pushed it back to the 37 before they quick kicked on fourth down. Edelman hands it off, Jarvis again, spins away from one tackler. Cradles the ball up to the 47-yard line, and he picks up eight. Let's get an update from Chicago in the studio, and here's Dave Revson. Well, I want to update you on the game between Northwestern and Minnesota. Wildcats second drive, C.J. Bechet dumps it off to Brandon Roberson. 46 yards later, he is down just inside the five, and Roberson pounds it across a couple of plays later. Cats on top, 7-0, Mark. Dave, thanks very much. It's second down at two for Kent State. Jarvis will not get the first down. Laurinaitis came up to drop him for no gain. Eugene Jarvis averaging 142 yards per game. Top five in the nation. Of course, Mike Hart of Michigan with 10 second, 163 per game. Third and short for Doug Martin's Golden Flashes. At their own 47 yard line. Jarvis has seven carries for 51 yards already today. On the keeper, first down. Worthington brings down Edelman. But Kent State keeps the football. Mark, that's why I love this game. Let me just say something. I keep saying best team game that's ever been invented when you put a bunch of guys on the field and they play together. Talent is not the most important factor. Edelman picked up six, first and ten. Well, now at the Ohio State 47-yard line, Buckeyes leading seven nothing on a Brian Hartline touchdown reception. Edelman under pressure. Golston. Vernon Golston picks up his fourth sack of the season, a loss of five. Well, Golston's one of the dominant players, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. We, many people would say he might be the Big Ten defensive player of the year, or at least the preseason Big Ten player of the year. Awfully good player. 6'4", 264 pounds, junior from Detroit, Vernon Golston. Second down at 17, ball now back at the 46 of Kent State. Long count. Edelman hands it off, and Jarvis finds Laurinaitis. He grabs him by the ankles to pick up about a yard. Laurinaitis won the Bronco Nagurski Award, which is something special for a guy that comes from the state of Minnesota. Interesting, uh, talking to the other defensive players, he's a leader because he spends the extra time watching the film Studying has really led, uh, raised their level of commitment to playing good defense. Laurinaitis is over 50 tackles now on the season. The Ohio State team leader. We played one quarter here in Columbus. It's seven nothing Ohio State. Hey, thanks very much. Starting the second quarter here in Columbus, seven nothing Ohio State. Kent State facing third down and 16 from their own 47 yard line. Play fake, Edelman steps up. He's going to deliver. He's got a man open, leaping attempt incomplete at the 35-yard line. Washington was there on the coverage, and Phil Gardner right along the sideline had to jump for that ball, but came down out of bounds. Mark, he's wide open. Edelman just put the ball too far outside. I, still, I like his composure, keeping his eyes downfield. Just off the mark just a little bit. They would have converted on third and long, which would have really drove him crazy. The Golden Flashes, the punt. Hart line takes it at the 10, retreats back near the 5, coming towards the near side. 
Gets a block across the 40. He may go. Part line with the punt return for touchdown. His second TD of the game. He returns it 90 yards, 13 nothing Ohio State. Well, again, the trademark of an Ohio State Jim Trestle coach team. Good defense, very good in the kicking game. Hardline actually made a very nice move there. Run it back to the near side. A really good block here on the sideline that sprung him. All good punt returns. You got to beat one guy, and that's what he did. Point after. And here early in the second quarter now, thanks to Brian Hartline's 90 yard punt return, the Buckeyes have taken a two score lead. Hartline with his second touchdown of the day. Brian Hartline's second touchdown of the game. This one on a 90 yard punt return, making it 14 0. Brian's brother Mike is the backup quarterback in Kentucky. So Brian's mom is here but late in the fourth quarter. Her plan is to get in the car, drive to Lexington tonight for that LSU Kentucky game. So the Hartline family busy, burn up a lot of miles, but it's been a big beginning for Brian Hartline with a touchdown catch and a touchdown on the punt return. McBride. We are deep. Staple down at the 17 yard line. You know, Mark, you can see that Kent State went with a tight punt formation. They got both tight ends in rather than split out. The advantage of that type of protection is you get protection, but you're hurting coverage. And they got exploited. Hard line. A couple of nice moves and a couple of blocks. He went down the sideline 90 yards. So it's 14 nothing. Still early here in the second quarter. Middleman hands it off. Jarvis. Marcus Freeman. Got him by the ankles. And this is one of three games going on simultaneously here on the Big Ten Network. Those of you on DirecTV, Dish, or AT&T Uverse, find the Purdue Michigan game on these channels. Minnesota Northwestern as well. You know, Mark, that's at least three times that Ohio State's made a good tackle. If that one guy missed the tackle, Jarvis is going to go a good distance. Second down at 10. Throw in the 18. Edelman, quick pass. It was deflected, and it's incomplete at the 27-yard line. He's wanting to go out to Aaron Robinson, a freshman, but the ball was tipped. Grant and Washington were over there. Third down and 10. Well, even though Kent State was trailing at the end of the first quarter by a 7-0 count in the special teams problem to begin the second quarter, they did some nice things in that first quarter, though. Well, you, if you were scoring a boxing match, even though they were buying 7-0, you would have given the first quarter to Kent State. Things have changed quickly here, though. Four receivers trips to the top of your screen on third down and 10. Edelman will hand it off. Jarvis. It's a hole up the middle, and he has a first down across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That's a pickup of 14. Anderson Russell, the free safety, was finally able to wrestle him to the ground. You know, Mark, I'm really surprised. The caliber of the defense of Ohio State, and to give up third and long like that, and that's the second third and long they should have given up because the other one was just a bad pass. It was wide open. Unusual. Up to 66 yards rushing for Jarvis on 10 carries. Averaging six and a half per carry. This time, missed throw. Incomplete. And Eugene Jarvis getting it done on the ground right now for the Golden Flashes. Yeah, he's been he's been the show of the day. And, you know, getting back to Doug Martin's comments, I think Jim Haycock, uh, defensive corner of Ohio State, is saying, hey, where's that second team back? I was going to say, get him in there. <laughs> Doug Martin mentioned earlier in the week that his second teamers would see significant playing time primarily as a way to keep the first teamers fresh. We're here into the second quarter now. First teamers facing second and 10 for Kent State. After a 32 yard line. Jarvis 
Hit the pile that time, not much there. Cameron Hayward, the freshman from Georgia on the tackle to gain a one. The Big Ten football continues next Saturday as Northern Illinois will travel to Madison to take on the Badgers. North Dakota State will be in Minneapolis to face Minnesota. Next Saturday, pregame coverage starts one hour before kickoff here on the Big Ten Network. Anderson Russell, free safety, not putting any weight. And that right foot, right leg. Russell, a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. When they come off the field like that, someone carrying them, no weight, not good. So his backup at free safety, Aaron Gantz. He's checked in, third down and long again for Kent State, third and nine. We have a flag, three snap. Third. Well, perhaps the injury led to this confusion. Here's how the injury occurred. Oh, crashing into him, blindsided him. Here we have an illegal substitution by the defense. You don't see that call very often. They had 12 men on the field when Kent State broke the huddle, then the guy ran off late. And that cuts it down to third down and four at the 38 of the Golden Flashes. Hamelman under heat, on his feet, still on his feet, retreats and is brought down at the 31 yard line by Donald Washington. He's gonna be well shy of the first down. Edelman did a lot of running east and west there. He couldn't do a whole lot north and south. Well, he breaks contain. He comes outside. There's nothing there. And as we talk so often, great speed here. And son, don't go backwards. Uh, he gets knocked around pretty good. But you're not going to go back that way against this defense. Well, on fourth down, Kilroy will punt. And the last one returned 90 yards by a heart line. This one a high end over end short punt and lands out of bounds near midfield. That one goes only about 15 yards. Well, he didn't kick it to heart line, but he only kicked it about 15. And great field position for the Buckeyes here on a gorgeous day in Columbus. 14 nothing Ohio State. is the Big Ten Network. Dave Revson in our Big Ten Network studios want to update you on Purdue and Michigan. And this, one of the better 11-yard runs you will see. Look at Mike Hart. Over the pile, the knees never go down. Hart's 11th touchdown of the year, already 45 yards in the game. And Michigan on top 17 set. Dave, thanks. I don't know about you, Glenn. I'm certainly never surprised by what Mike Hart does. Here's the catch by Rubisky at the 45. Gain of five on first down. Jack Williams the tackle. Mark, I agree with you on Mike Hart. He's a tough runner, tough competitor. He's the heart and soul of that Michigan team right there. Brian Rubisky, junior from Cleveland, the five-yard catch. Been having a nice year, averaging just under 100 yards receiving per game. Six touchdown catches so far this year. He's, he's checking the plays there in his hip pocket, front pocket. And line up on second down and five. Here comes the end around and Hart line. Already has a couple of scores today, but is wrestled down at the 39 yard line by Dan Hartman. You know, I've never seen receivers have uh, have to look at their plays like that unless they were in a no huddle offense uh, type of thing. It must be a, a mouthful. It was a kind of a double reverse. Yeah, Hard a gadget play. Maybe that was the reason he looked. He said, whoa, 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 what's that call? <laughs> okay, I better block. Well, did pick up the first down. First down and 10 at the 38 at Kent State. 14 nothing Ohio State, the third ranked team in the land. Out of the eye. Across the middle, Rubisky wide open. Stumbles down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Jack Williams, the tackler 
for Kent State and a pickup of 26 yards. You'll see it right here. The receivers right over the middle. They, it was a half party fake in the backfield on the lead draw, which sucked the linebackers up. Quarterback dropped it right in behind him to Rubisky. A couple of quick catches for Rubisky here in this second quarter, and it's first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Rubisky's dad's a coach. And now the wide receiver coach for the Dolphins and Beanie Wells inside the 10 yard line. Stefan Moss, the tackler, pick up about seven. Well, this is the second meeting in history between these schools. The first came just over five years ago, the season that Ohio State wound up going on and winning the national championship. Ohio State has not lost to an, an another Ohio opponent in a very long time. The schedule's been stocked with them this year. Wells towards the end zone, feet moving into the end zone. Beanie Wells, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Now he's had an ankle injury that's plagued him about all season. And that time those feet kept moving and he found his way into the end zone. Mark, Ohio State's got as big an offensive line as you'll see in the country. When I say they're 300 pounds, they're 300 pounds plus. I think this is the type of attack that if Jim wanted to, Jim Chester wanted to stick with all day, he probably could just control the game. But in saying that, one thing Jim Bowman, the offensive coordinator for Ohio State, emphasized that they know they're going to need more of their offense as they go down the second half of their schedule. With a seven yard touchdown run by Chris Wells, and the point after makes it 21 0. 9 49 to go till halftime. Well, Ohio State to win this game, would of course remain amongst the unbeaten in the land. LSU's got a test tonight in Lexington, Cal, Ohio State, BC, South Florida. How about them in Missouri? Well, a couple Pomo, surprises Utah. there. You know, Cincinnati, where Mark D'Antonio just left that. He obviously he left that in good order for Brian Kelly as um, Mark went up to Michigan State, Hawaii 7-0. Oh, I watched that game last night. They came back from uh, behind, and One Boston and College has a new coach. They're 6-0. And, oh. and how about South Florida? Good football team. Yeah, and Hawaii. Arizona State. Right. With uh, Dennis Erickson. Hawaii, very fortunate, though, still to be among the unbeaten. From the 12-yard line, under cut at the 29. And Bryant on the return. And Andre Amos, who's back from injury, makes the tackle. It's an 18 yard return for McBride. You know, to think that Andre Amos is back after major surgery on a knee in spring practice and back playing what has happened with the medical treatment in college athletics, that was amazing. Our Holiday Inn Express Ohio State scoring drive, five plays, 50 yards, took just over two minutes. And the Beanie Wells seven yard touchdown run. We'll see the second teamers for the first time. Anthony Magazoo now in as the quarterback. Peter Abdullah on the tackle. That is Anthony Magazoo, a sophomore from Matthews, North Carolina. And his dad's a coach. Correct. With the Carolina Panthers, dad. David is the tight end coach. Two second down and eight. So let's see how things go for the Kent State offense in the direction of Magazoo. Jarvis not in the game either. Play fake. Magazoo throws. Had a man open at the 43 yard line, but it's dropped by Vanderink. It would have been good for a first down. Magazoo put that ball right on the money. Left handed, going out to his left. Good fake. Might have had the sun in his eyes, you know it. Yeah, Van Der Inc, freshman from here in Ohio. And it's third down and eight. Van Der Inc to the sidelines. Last time in the situation they ran it, Mark. Three receivers. In motion, Oldro. And they do run it. Not much there, though, at the 32-yard line. Chekwa and Freeman 
to regain him just a couple. I'll tell you, number five, Chekwa, for a freshman, Ohio State coaching staff, extremely high on that young man. Check with the reigning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. He had 10 solo tackles in their win at Purdue last week. Penn State has spread that punt formation out a little bit to give them better coverage. Gilroy's punt. Hard line calling for the fair catch just inside the Ohio State 30 yard line. 8.20 to go till halftime here in Columbus to the third ranked team in the land. Looking good. 8.20 left till halftime. 21-0 Ohio State leading Kent State in this interstate battle with these Ohio teams. Junior QB Todd Beckman, one touchdown pass so far today. And he hands it off. No wells. Not much there thanks to Cedric Maxwell, the middle linebacker of the Golden Flashes. Well, last week, the Purdue offense came in as the number one ranked offense in the Big Ten. But Ohio State scored on their first two possessions. Ray Small with one catch. Hartline had one. And the defense was unbelievably good. The Purdue offense didn't even get the ball inside the Ohio State 40 until late in the game. They put in a late score about 10 seconds to go. Here is Rubisky. Immediately dropped after the catch at the 32-yard line by Jack Williams. A pickup of five. So the Ohio State defense was certainly up to the challenge against Purdue a week ago and talk about a rush defense. That's a rush defense right there. You're not kidding. I wasn't surprised that Ohio State beat Purdue but by that score and you talk about what they did Purdue's offense Kent State done a lot better today. And Haycock the defensive coordinator. For the Buckeyes. Third down and six. And Beckman quick throw caught screen small. He looks like he's going to have the first down right near the marker at the 39. Williams and Sadler bring him down. Again, of about five or six, and it will be enough for the first down. That's the second time Ohio State's gone to that fire screen. One time to the wide side of the field to the three receivers, one to the boundary with the two receivers. Both times been successful. First time, Hartline took it back outside for. Hartline's from Glen Oak. High school up there in Canton played for Jack Rose who used to coach for me at Kent State. Now he's back in the high school ranks correct. Beckman. Going to throw it deep. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Well it's the show for all Big Ten fans. Featuring highlights analysis interviews and much more the Big Ten tonight every night right here on the Big Ten Network. Fans in scarlet and gray happier right now than the team in the white, blue, and gold. Mark, this Central Ohio Day is getting nicer and nicer and nicer. Beautiful there. It's been cloudy and cool the last few days, but sun came out about an hour before game time today. It's great. Second down and 10. Beckman to throw again, but this time. He is sacked. Colin Farrell, senior from Hamilton, New Jersey, drops him for a loss of six. All right from behind, and Farrell is third sack of the season. My state hasn't given up many sacks this year, Mark. That brings up third down and 15. All just shy of the Buckeyes. 35. And third and long. Guess what? Back with the pass. Still looking. Throws it towards the near side for a hard line at the 35. Incomplete. Ryan Lanehart on the coverage. It's fourth down. Well, Todd Beckman had all day to throw that football. Kent State finally got pressure on him late. But I'll tell you that secondary, you can't cover guys and give them that much time. A couple of defenders over there, including Lane Hart. And Hart line. Defended by Lane Hart. 
Lasso's punt. Prager takes it at the 30. 35 yard punt, return of a yard. And now the Kent State offense will have it once again. Let's get an update from the field, though. See how things are going with Rob. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. Glenn, you just mentioned it. Kent State giving Ohio State a lot better game than we really saw Purdue. And when we talked last night with some of the coaches, they felt like they hadn't really been tested yet as a team. And I think when you look at Kent State's offense, you got to look at the fact that they're really run-oriented. It's not like the spread offense as Ohio State has seen the last six weeks. So they're really forcing Ohio State to kind of buckle it up and really go uh, play this run. Rob, thanks. Edelman. Rob, I couldn't agree with you more. Kent State is down 21 nothing, but I am impressed with their offense, their defense, and you just take a couple, it's all part of the game, but you take a couple plays out of there, the punt return, the screen play out there, one deep throw, and they're playing a high State toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The plays hurt them today. Edelman's back in the game, 11-yard reception by Rashad Tooks. First down at the Golden Flash's 42-yard line. They have four receivers, two to each side. Edelman hands it off. Andre Flowers up the middle. Doug Worthington, defensive tackle, pulls him down. You know, additionally, uh, Mark, what Rob was talking about, and Kent's just running their offense. You know, one of the things I said, I thought they'd have to do smoke and mirrors. I was wrong. They're just running their inside zone, their play action pass, utilizing their running back. Ohio State has more total yards, but not a huge discrepancy in that department. For the gain of seven, second down and three. At the Golden Flashes, 49. Simpson comes in motion over to the far side. Edelman hands it off. Flowers running left, cuts it back. And he is not going to have the first down. He's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. All right, they're going to have fourth down and three. Their own 49. Let's see how they respond. It looked like they were going to go for it earlier in the game on fourth down. Actually, it is third down. It is third and three. Crowd's getting into it now, Mark. In state, two of six on third down. To the 42-yard line, Austin Spittler, the middle linebacker on the tackle. Both times that they had short yardage and they went to the option, it worked very effectively with the quarterback keeping the ball. And Edelman gains nine to move the chains. Wasn't any doubt this time he was going to run it. You've heard me over the weeks talk about contain. There was no edge on the defense. The play side tackle was able to reach the end Allowing the quarterback to get outside. Clock running. Three and a half minutes to go till halftime. Flowers bumps off one tackler and then gets pushed down at the 37-yard line by Marcus Freeman. Gains five. Flowers is a freshman from the state of Tennessee. Dyer County High School. I'll tell you, that's how th things have changed in the Mid-American Conference. Uh, when I was at Kent State, uh, all but a handful of players were from the state of Ohio. You didn't have the recruiting budget to go all over these places, but now you play teams like Ohio State and Kentucky, you get more money for going there, you can go other places to recruit. On second and three, quick pass, intercepted. Donald Washington down the sideline. Edelman's the only one that's got a chance. He won't get him. Washington with the interception return for touchdown, 72 yards, he brings it back. That play earlier in the game, Glenn, you pointed out they were playing with fire, and that time Washington jumped it and takes it the other way. Mark, one thing I was always nervous about, when you play a team like Ohio State with great speed, and you've got corners like Washington and Jenkins, you throw that ball out there in the flat, unless they're way back off you, that's going to happen. Washington, 72 yards on the interception return. And the point after. Looks at a 28-0 Ohio State lead. Well, it's been the big plays. And have helped Ohio State, the third-ranked team in the nation. Mark, both those corners, Washington and Jenkins, are excellent. And talking to the Ohio State coaches, they thought Malcolm Jenkins is a strong guy. I'd like to play him in the boundary. 
and Donald Washington is that wide field corner, what some people call a shutdown corner. They, they wouldn't hesitate playing him man-to-man -man on any receiver in the Big Ten Conference. Great football player. Donald Washington, sophomore from Indianapolis. Well, you can see it right here. They're going to throw the ball out in this area right here. They threw it out there late one time, and all of a sudden, that's the guy you got to worry about. If he anticipates it, it's gone the other way. Washington jumps the route. The quarterback has to read the corner. And you can see the receiver came off there and he didn't back up one lick. He was playing that. Why? Because he has makeup speed. He figures if the guy goes deep, he can just turn and run with him. Ninth time Edelman has been intercepted this year. Capasso's kickoff. And a couple yards deep. He'll take an E. The turnovers have been a big issue for Kent State, not only in this game, but this season. Look at the turnover margin. Fumbles and interceptions have been a problem. And the one pick today. Well, really, you look at their schedule in their games. They're three and three coming in. They protect the ball better. They're probably a five and one team now, Glenn. No doubt about it. That's why I always tell you, you guys always put up that time of possession stat, which means nothing. Show me what the score is. Show me what the turnovers are. That'll tell us. Anthony Magazu, sophomore quarterback, back in for the Golden Flashes. Also back in, though, is Jarvis, and he gets the carry. Picks up eight yards. Well, the high State coaching staff at halftime is not going to be pleased the way they defended the run. They're not giving up any big plays, but... Kent State, give them credit. They've been pretty consistent. When I say give them credit, they got a good running back. If you don't think those guys up front are doing a good job blocking as good a defensive front as you'll see in the Big Ten Conference, you're wrong. Second down and one. Here comes the blitz. Jarvis will have the first down. Gets away from a couple of arm tackles. Up to the 32-yard line. Gains three yards. You know, Mark, if I was going to hire somebody in business or something like that, and a guy came in to me and told me that he was a real good student, had the potential to prove it, and he played offensive line in major college football, I'd hire that guy. He's a winner. I can tell you they're unselfish, they're hardworking, they know the meaning of teamwork. They're the greatest guys in any football team. Under two minutes to go till halftime here in Columbus. First and ten. Old flashes at their own 32. Magazoo hands it off. Jarvis being chased by Freeman, who able, is able to get him by the ankles with a leaping attempt there. And the junior, Freeman, hits it from behind. And no gain. There's another example. Here's the Ohio State crowd. They're holding their breath right here because this guy's got some speed. And if number one doesn't make that shoestring tackle, I'm not sure the guy coming inside out is going to make the play. Talking about offensive linemen, I was looking to my left, and it's Jim Lachey, a guy that had the opportunity to coach when I was here at Ohio State. All-time great player, and you're not going to find a better human being than that guy from St. Henry, Ohio. 14 carries, nearly 80 yards. Eugene Jarvis. Well, did it come loose? It did. And Ohio State recovers. They have a minute five left. And they're going to have it at the 36-yard line of Kent State. Lane on the recovery. What were we saying about turnovers for Kent State? Doug Worthington on the tackle for the Buckeyes on the previous play. Worthington knocks it out. Lane jumps on it. And the Ohio State offense is going to get another crack at it here with 65 seconds left till halftime. The second Kent State turnover on back to back Golden Flashes possessions. Well, let's see if Tressel goes out for the knockout punch here with a big play after a turnover with good field position. Maurice right, Wells, the lone back. And he'll get the carry. Wells coming it towards the outside, but a nice tackle there by Jamison Cons, the strong side linebacker. Really good tackle because there's a lot of space there and you put a guy with Wells ability and speed and space. That, that young man made a nice play. Clock running 45 seconds to go. And second down and seven. After a gain of three. A whistle at the snap. Penalty marker before the snap. 
Kent State. Their first. Kent State uses their first timeout. Mark, you get in this situation if you're high state, you've got a commanding lead. You're up 28 nothing. You got a turnover. There's 35 seconds left before the half. What better situation do you have to work your two minute offense, your 35 second offense, in this case, to get points on the board before the half? And Jim is a great football coach. Jim Tressel has been around a long time. He knows that somewhere coming down the stretch, he's going to have to do this where he doesn't have a 28 point lead. What better arena to practice than right here, right now? Look at our U.S. Bank. Conference standings, Ohio State and the Illini each off to 3 0 conference starts. Michigan unbeaten in conference play. They've won four in a row. But Indiana at 2 1, 5 1 overall. Well, we said at the beginning of the season, my two sleepers, dark horse picks, guys, the uh, teams that were going to be better than maybe people thought were Indiana and Illinois, and I think I was correct on that one. Indiana's loss at home to Illinois. Well, there are a few defeats here recently. Indiana Michigan State tonight on the Big Ten Network. The tight end Ballard inside the 20 down to the 16 yard line and he gets out of bounds and the clock stops with 29 seconds left. Excellent, up play, excellent play by Ballard. Excellent coaching by Ohio State staff. They picked up the yards they need and he got out of bounds. All too often you'll see a young player. He'll cut back inside rather than getting the ball out of bounds. On review, I'm not sure he was going out of bounds. They tackled him out. He lost the football there. And Ohio State has it first and 10 from the 15. Now it goes in motion. Beckman delivers to the back. And there is Mo Wells untouched into the end zone. 15 yard touchdown pass, catch and run. By Maurice Wells, his third touchdown of the season. Somebody forgot about the back. Well, I'm sure if someone heard me keep saying that High State's playing okay and that Kent State's playing pretty well, but it's 35 nothing or going to be 35 nothing, we think. Ryan Pretorius extra point out of the hold of Joe Toma indeed makes it a 35 nothing score. Well here we got Wells in the in the backfield he's just going to swing outside and as uh, my partner said they forgot to cover him. That's stretching the field. That's when people talk about people running the spread offense there's all different versions of the spread offense in high state they're spreading everybody out there and throwing it to Wells now I don't think you have to worry about Beckman carrying the ball and that's what I always think the true threat of a spread offense is when you have a quarterback that's also going to carry it. Maurice Wells junior from Jacksonville Florida had two career rushing touchdowns entering this season now he's added three this year so five now in his career. With 23 seconds remaining Paso to kick off for the Buckeyes. We got the soprano theme song playing now. I don't know what the significance of that is, do you? I do not. There's the squib kick. Knocked down, and then they cover it up at the 27 yard line. Last thing Kent State wants to do is turn it over once again here with just 21 seconds left. Big Ten fans, make sure you enter the BCS bound for the Big Easy Sweepstakes for your chance to win a trip to the 2008 All State BCS National Championship game in New Orleans. Could win an HDTV or other great prizes. For more information, just log on to BCSBound.com. Magazoo. Will he take a knee? Nope. He's going to hand it off. Flowers will carry and find a hole up to the 39 yard line. He picks up 12. Coleman on the tackle. Clock will stop while they move the chain. 16 seconds left. Mark, I'm surprised. That's a number of times Kent State's run that little draw play right up the middle for significant yards. Clock does restart now as you see it rolling. Eight seconds left. This may be the final play of the half. Flowers. 
loses a yard. Austin Spittler on the tackle, and that takes us to the intermission. Now the big play. This one has propelled Ohio State to this big lead, and Doug Martin's golden flashes didn't play all that poorly. Yes, they're down 35 nothing, but again, the big plays, problems on special teams, interception return for touchdown, and the third-ranked Buckeyes have the big lead here at the intermission. Ohio State again comes in ranked third with the 6-0 record on the season. So the Buckeyes are playing Kent State for the first time since their national championship season in 2002. Is that an omen? Uh, well, that's kind of where I was leading with that. <laughs> Who knows? You know, they beat the Golden Flashes that year, went on to beat Miami in the title game. Let's get an update from the field and check in with Rob Hart. All right, guys, standing here with Coach Trestle. Coach, the talk all week has been upset all around the nation. How have you guys, uh, how have you thought your team has come out and played intensity-wise? Well, I, you know, it's been pretty fair. When you get two returns like that, a school record punt return and a, a pick to the house, you know, that makes it look maybe better than it is. I think we're doing all right. We're going to have to figure out a way to stop their ground game a little bit. We're not used to having people run the ball on us a little bit. And I think our kids are focused, but I don't know if we're at the top of our game. we got to get better second half. As you look at uh, your young quarterback, Todd Beckman, how have you thought, if you graded him right now during the first half, what would he grade out at? Well, Todd's older than I am. He's not that, uh, <laughs> that young of a quarterback, but uh, he's done well. I th probably made you know most of the right decisions there was one maybe he threw up there they shouldn't have but you know, he, he has a command of what we're trying to do all right coach thanks a lot good luck in the second half mark back to you Rob coach Trestle thank you very much and as the coach mentioned the big play has been a big part of this first half a Brian Hartline 90 yard punt return and the interception return for touchdown by Donald Washington we're at the intermission in Columbus 35 nothing Buckeyes the half of the horseshoe Ohio State leading Kent State 35 nothing and here's a special treat some say they're the best band in the land and who would disagree Fun to watch. 35 nothing Ohio State leading Kent State here at the half. Mark Neely along with Glenn Mason. All right, it's 35 nothing. The big play and the turnovers really hurt the Golden Flashes. Ohio State has been really stubborn against the run, but Kent State really did some good things on the ground. Well, Mark, you could tell by Jim Trestle's reaction going in at halftime, less than ecstatic. And he pointed out some big plays. You know, they had the punt return, a record setting punt return mm -hmm. for a touchdown, the pick for another touchdown. And he said, we're not used to having the ball run on us. And I, I think they're disappointed with that. So it's a 35 nothing lead for Ohio State. Let's check down on the field again with Rob. Hey guys, thanks a lot. Standing here with uh, Kent State head coach Doug Martin. How do you feel like your kids have come out and played that first half? Well, we competed hard, but we've hurt ourselves. We did exactly what we couldn't do. We gave them the big punt return for a touchdown, and then, of course, the turnovers killed us. But other than that, you know, we've run the ball pretty effectively. We've thrown the ball decent. Uh, we just got to come out and compete for another 30 minutes. Okay, uh, you know, looking at the, you said you're going to play your uh, second string guys a lot. You're going to stick with that same mentality in the second half? Yeah, and we've done that the whole year. That's nothing different for us. We keep a lot of people fresh. The only difference is we're playing another quarterback a little bit to keep Julian uh, fresh. But we're going to play them all just like we did in the first half. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Mark, back to you. Rob, Coach Martin, thank you very much. But as he mentioned, they, they did some good things on the ground. That has to be a concern for Ohio State. I think he can be proud of the way his guys came down here to the horseshoe and competed in the first half. Without those mistakes, this could be a ball game. Well, those mistakes and turnovers did compound themselves. This is how the scoring occurred. First drive for the Buckeyes. Hardline, 14-yard touchdown reception. It's 7-0, and then Hardline on a punt return. He gets a great block. Number 84 is Doug Worthington. That springs him, and he goes 90 yards on the punt return. The point after made it 14-0. Then we get Beanie Wells. Nice touchdown here. 21 zip, Ohio State. And then this interception return for Donald Washington was a big play. 
He takes it 72 yards. Well, a lot of big plays. You know, we saw that early in the game that uh, he would jump that, and then here you got Wells on a swing pass, and as you mentioned, they had no one on him, and another touchdown for High State. And Maurice Wells finishing it off to make it a 35-0 lead for Ohio State here at the half. The second half kickoff from the Horseshoe is just ahead here on the Big Ten Network. Back here at the Horseshoe in Columbus, third-ranked Ohio State, leading Kent State by a score of 35 to nothing. Take a look at some of the numbers from half number one. The rushing yards. Guess which team has the decided edge there? It's Kent State, 113 to 22. But then on the flip side on the passing, 184 to 49 for the Buckeyes. Total yards, not all that huge a difference, especially when you look at a 35 nothing score. That wouldn't indicate that, but the Turnovers and big plays have hurt the golden flashes. They want to come out here and compete in half number two as much and as hard as they competed in the first half. Mark, I promise you the people that see that box score right there for the first half will think someone's got it backwards because of the rushing stats. Well, even the officials getting together before we begin the second half, giving each other a little pep talk. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no comment <laughs> from the former coach, Glenn Basil. There's Beanie Wells waving to some folks. Beanie and Jim Tressel in his seventh season came here in 2001. He's won three Big Ten titles, one national championship. And Chris Wells has his sixth touchdown run of the year today. All right, we're ready for half number two. And Kent State will receive to begin the second half. AJ Trapasso, Jr. from Pickerington, Ohio. Mark, take it away. It's going to be interesting to watch how Ohio State rallies to stop this rushing attack by Kent. Alan Vanderink, actually that's Derek McBride, a few yards deep. Vanderink says, keep it right there, and takes a knee, and it'll be first and 10 from the 20 for the Golden Flashes. And they do send out first team quarterback Julian Edelman. You know, there's a lot of different ways to approach football. Doug Martin, kind of a low key guy, he's got a plan, well coached football team, regardless of the mistakes they made. Edelman, the quarterback. Jarvis they fake the handoff to him, and Edelman with time. It's a block from Parrish coming to the near side, but now he's got four scarlet jerseys around him, and he loses three yards. Vernon Golston was one of the first to get to him. The difference in athletic ability shows up there. I would think against most mid-American teams that they played, that probably would have turned into a big play either with him carrying the ball or dumping it off. But you can't run east and west against this Ohio State team. You've got to get it north and south as quick as you can. Loss of two, second and 12 at the 18. Jarvis takes the handoff. And Worthington wraps him up quickly. And he gets maybe a yard. Eugene Jarvis, the five foot, five inch sophomore from Pittsburgh. Kent in the first half got to the place where this third and long situation was a pretty conservative call. They ran the ball a couple times, they did some short passes. Be interesting what they do right here. I'm sure they're worried if they don't convert about giving a high state good field position. Third and 11. Play fake. Edelman going to go long down the near sideline. There's some contact near midfield. No flag. Phil Garner, the intended receiver, and Donald Washington had him on the coverage. You're right. There's some contact here. Let's... Classic mistake. Big. Kent receiver maybe look for the ball too early. I mean, if you look back for the ball, you don't run as fast. I think if he would have kept running, he might have gone by him. Good no call by the official there. See, I always pick on the officials, Mark. <laughs> Let's document that. Somebody mark the tape so we can roll that back at some point. Here's Small and Hartline back to receive the punt and the fair catch 
at midfield by Ray Small. A 31 yard punt for Kilroy. Millard Suzuki keys to the game that we mentioned at the top for Kent State. Play the game, and those 113 rushing yards indicate that they are. They did, and when I went by smoke and mirrors, they have not had to rely on that. They just ran their base offense, ran the running game. I didn't think they could do that against the high state's uh, defense. I was wrong. But the two turnovers have hurt them. Robbie Schoenhoff is the quarterback to begin the second half for the Buckeyes. Out of the I formation, Brandon Sane gets the carry, uses a stiff arm to get inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. A gain of six, Derek Burrell on the tackle. Well, the Suzuki keys to the game on the Ohio State side. They've gotten the 14 points off the two turnovers. That's been well, a big story. When I meant turnovers, there was a not having turnovers. They haven't had them. They've gone the other way and got them and set the tone. I'm not sure that they've done that. I think that, uh, you know, they would have liked to play it a little bit better, especially on defense stopping the run. Second down and three. Saying the lone back. He gets the handoff. Puts the head down and powers forward near a first down, but a flag comes flying out. We saw Brandon Sane. This flag came out late, too, from way on the side there. A would vote our referee. I think that's Rick Kruger making that call. Illegal crackback on the offense number 12, 15 yards from the previous spot. Indeed, second down. There's Robbie Schoenhoff, 6'6", 244-pound junior from Mason, Ohio, St. Xavier High School. Played in a couple of games last year as a redshirt freshman. That illegal crackback, and that's where a receiver is going back toward the ball and blocks below the waist. The officials didn't even warn you on that. They'll throw the flag. Very dangerous play. Well, the penalty pushes him back to their own 42. Second down and 18. And here comes Sane. Big hole down the sideline to the 35 down to the Kent State 30 yard line. For a host of tacklers, pulled him down, but it's a gain of 28 for the freshman Brandon Sane. Well, you'll see they dropped the ball out to Brandon Sane, same type of play that Wells scored on the first half. And you can see right there for a second when he stutter stepped, I'm not sure that, that he's completely healthy yet because he's got outstanding speed. I would have thought he would have just busted on through there. Sane had knee surgery, actually a, had a knee scoped on September 21st to repair some torn cartilage, but they're very high on this freshman from Piqua High School. After the long run, he gets the carry again. Uh, this time, Cedric Maxwell wraps him up, a gain of two. Mark, time will tell. Everybody knows about Beanie Wells, a highly recruited guy that came in here, big guy, strong guy, fast guy. Uh, but I get the feeling that they think this guy might be the guy in due time. Brandon Sane. 6'1", 205 pounds, and what he's done so far this year, a couple of touchdowns. And let's not forget that Maurice Wells is no slouch. Depth and talent, talent and depth. And Saint has two rushing touchdowns, also has one receiving, so three total touchdowns on the year. Second down and eight. Shown off, throws it and underthrows the intended receiver at the 20 yard line. Lyons, the intended receiver. Evan Lyons, third down and eight. You know, strategically, Mark, I think this is a good move by Jim Tressel. Going with his backup quarterback, he's got a commanding lead. He knows he's going to need another quarterback going down the stretch. And it's, you know, practice is one thing. Actually playing in this venue is something else. So third down and eight. Ohio State three of five on third down today. Joan Hoff dumps it off. Same. Moves towards the 20, inside the 20, has a first down at the 19-yard line. And the freshman gains nine more. Hartman on the tackle. Well, you'll see Sane come out here, and he blocks the defensive end, lets him go. Just a little slip screen. Everybody's rushing the quarterback. They think they've got a sack. They're wrong. 
Brandon Say back. This is his first game back after that knee was scoped September 21st. Out of the eye. On first down. More Brandon Say pops it off right tackle. And inside the 15 yard line. Dan Hartman again on the stop and pick up a four. Well, the Big Ten Network is looking for its most passionate fans with Big Ten Super Fans. The Big Ten Network wants to reward its loyal viewers with chances to win great prizes like tickets to a Big Ten game, TVs, iPods, and a whole lot more. Register now. You could be a winner. Register at BigTenNetwork.com. Second down and six. Throwing off in the empty backfield. Goes to the far side. It's complete at the 10 yard line. One missed tackle, but there was Stefan Moss able to bring Sane down after a gain of six. Isolating good receivers on backs. One guy has to make the play, and if he misses, that's pretty good pursuit there by Kent State making the play in the cleanup. Maxwell missed him, but Moss got him. First and goal, though, from the eight-yard line. Sane cuts it back, going towards the far side. He's in a foot race, and he is pushed out by Jack Williams. He picks up six yards. Williams was able to get a bit of an angle on him and make sure he did not get to the end zone. Those type of plays work sometimes, but more often than not, when a guy gets stopped and he goes all the way out the back door, off an off tackle power play, you're asking for trouble. One thing out of a zone, another thing out of a power play. Second down and goal from the two. Ray Smalls out wide to the right, two receivers to the top of your screen. Going off, wants to keep it himself, and staggers into the end zone for a Buckeyes touchdown. Robbie Shonoff with a two-yard touchdown run. 41-0 Buckeyes. Well, they line up in the shotgun. You worry about the guys up front handling it, and they're just going to run an option play down here in the goal line. The quarterback's going to keep it. Donoff's first touchdown of the year. And the extra point. Knocked home. And it's a 42 0 Ohio State lead. Robbie Shonoff getting to handle the troops for Ohio State. He punches it in himself. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. By Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com. And by Yield Guard VT Triple, the Yield Protection System. Beautiful day here at Columbus. And for the third ranked Ohio State Buckeyes, they're up 42 0 with 9.38 to go in the third quarter. And it's great to have one of the all time terrific coaches in Ohio State history. I'm not talking about this guy, <laughs> Lynn Mason. I'm talking about this guy, Earl Bruce. Earl, it's great to see you. You look terrific. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Nice to be here with great weather for a football game in the Big Ten. You know, it's uh, it's something when you come to watch Big Ten football and, well, it's one team's Big Ten, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a lull in the Big Ten season right now to play a, an out-of-conference football team, but that's the way it is. People may want to know what you're up to these days. Well, I work for WTVN Radio and mm -hmm. do radio uh, analyst uh, on uh, their Thursday night show, a call-in show, and before and after the football game, and I really enjoy talking football. So back in Columbus, and you kind of feel right at home here, don't you? Well, that's why I moved back from Florida uh, in the end of 205, but I was eight years there, and uh, I miss my family, and uh, I love Columbus. There's no doubt about that. Well, we need to get some stories about your time with Glenn Mason. Here's the kick bounced into the end zone and he's going to take a knee. It will be a touchback. Mark, let me tell you something. You talk about a guy that went to high state as an assistant coach, head coach here. I don't know of any human being that loves the high state more than coach Earl Bruce. 
Well, uh, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you both were on Woody Hayes' staff. And different times. Different, different, times. At different times, though. And when Woody's reign ended, you took over for Woody Hayes. What was it like to replace a guy who's as big as a legend as you'll ever find in a college football team? Well, I know people that wanted to be the guy that follow, follow the guy that followed Woody Hayes, but but I wouldn't have had that opportunity because it was my time to be there or not at all. So uh, it was uh, it was. It, it's always tough to follow a legend like Coach Hayes, but he was very helpful to me. He was my football coach at one time and was very good and respectful, and I was an assistant for six years. So I know about him, and he helped me in many many ways. He just came over and said, are you practicing for Michigan? Are you practicing <laughs> for Michigan? You know, I always thought it was interesting. As you know, Coach, the thought of Michigan is never far from the minds of any high state. And in halftime, they played a devil came down from Georgia, a dueling uh, Banjos, whatever you call it out there, and one guy had a Michigan shirt on. And the Ohio State guy won. He ripped the shirt off of the Michigan banjo player and threw it in the stands, and then they proceeded to play. We don't give a damn for the whole state of Michigan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, that's. Well, it's all a crescendo from here in. You got to win in the, uh, you know, in the Big Ten in the month of uh, November, or you're just a, a pretender and not a contender. And you go right down to the Michigan game with Ohio State and Michigan, greatest rivalry in college football, no doubt. Second down at six. And no place to go. And there's the sack. You know, Coach, I've been taking a lot of grief. My tie, it's kind of maize and blue, oh. but it's because of Kent State. I got a gray oh, suit on yeah. and a maize and blue tie. I'm neutral. You're right. You're right. Hey, Rob Harley, our sideline reporter down on the field, has a question for you. Rob? Yeah, I was actually going to say, Coach Bruce, from an alumnus to, to another alumnus in Glenn today, I came up there and he's dressed in maize and blue. And you guys already <laughs> hit on it. I said, I w I'm wondering what you're thinking, Coach Bruce. <laughs> Well, uh, we accept that. Uh, we, we, we honor them when we don't play them, but the day we play them, we're going to take them apart. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Andre is the ball carrier. It's a good-looking tie, though, isn't it? Well, it's a good-looking tie. That's, a, <laughs> that's that $5 tie you used to buy when you were assistant <laughs> coach, buddy. <laughs> well, they had one back then. <laughs> when he took over as head coach at Kent State, what were your thoughts when he, when he got his opportunity to be a head guy? Oh, I thought he'd be a great head coach. That's why I told him to go up there and, uh, and turn it around a little bit up there because they, they had been good when, when Coach James was up there, and they needed someone to follow him and do a good job, and, and he did that. Hart Lyde takes the punt on the move and is pushed out at the 46-yard line. We'll take a timeout. Earl, been great seeing you. Thanks so oh, much for stopping in. Bet. Nice to be here. Thanks a lot. Legendary Earl Bruce, our guest. 7.35 to go third quarter. Ohio State, third-ranked team in the country, leading Kent State 42-0. And the Buckeyes have it from their own 47-yard line to begin this drive. Shown off, hands off, right into the pile for minimal gain. Well, today's Cargill passing combination from the first half. Todd Beckman, Brian Rubisky on the year. They've hooked up 35 times for 636 yards and six touchdowns with Hardline's big day. We didn't really mention Brian a whole lot, but he did have some key catches in that first half. And he is he and Hardline, along with Small, really made up a receiving core that has grown up in a hurry here after they lost a lot of talent last season. Yeah, I thought going in this game, Rubisky had become their go-to guy um, to replace um, Anthony Gonzalez, who went to pro football with the Colts this year. Showing off the throw on second down. Across the middle, wide open, complete. At the 40-yard line, Dan Hartman brings down Williams after a gain of 11. Marcus Williams. Getting the first down, first and 10. Buckeyes now in Golden Flash's territory at their 40 yard line. Showing off, sack. Back at the 48 yard line by Kevin Hogan. He loses eight at Ohio State. Seemingly in good position here today. What's left on their schedule? They have Michigan State here next week. They have to go to Penn State. Wisconsin comes here. I'm really intrigued by that Illinois game on November 10th because even when Illinois has struggled in the past few years, they've still played Ohio State very tough. And now Illinois has proven they're a very good football team this year. 
Mark, you're right. It, I don't know why, but it seems like certain teams are the thorn in the side of other teams, and Illinois has been the thorn in the high state side the last 10 years or so. And oh, yeah, that final game is at the big house. The catch up to the 32 yard line. Reception by Torrance. Rico Murray on the tackle, but a pickup of 18 yards. Seven, Rico Murray on the tackle. Well, the way the schedule plays out, the two teams that Ohio State do not play in conference have already lost. So Ohio State knows that if they win out, they would be the outright Big Ten champs. And of course, have their eye on the big prize as well of looking for another national championship. Third down and one. Williams running right. Won't get it. Stopped at the 32 yard line. What do you think coach go for it. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> well it's fourth down and two after no gain. We're going to bring out the punting unit. The field goal unit from about a 49 yarder. Ryan Pretorius attempting a 49 yarder. Pretorius. A couple of his offensive linemen were sleeping on that team. They, I think they thought, like I did, they were going to go for it. And the protection team. From 49. And it's good. Ryan Pretorius. That's his longest of the season. 44 had been his previous long. 45 nothing Buckeyes. Four twenty five to go in the third quarter. Forty five nothing Buckeyes. Been a good day for the Scarlet and Gray. Yeah, that's a fan there. Look at that get up. <laughs> I got you babe. Trapasso. Kicks off. From the six. Don't get past the 20. Gain of or a return of 16 yards for McBride. Our Liberty Mutual alumni spotlight. Features <laughs> guy used to wear number 69. <laughs> that photo would have been from what, 1970? I don't know. Too long. I can't remember. <laughs> Glenn Mason. <laughs> Kid State with 320 to go. Swing it out and dropped by McBride. Well, we walked into Jim Trestle's office the other day. It was very kind of him to. Bring this out. You didn't see him offering me a scholarship, <laughs> no, though, did you? <laughs> no. You wore 69. Uh, Any significance about how you got the number? Was everything just a random well, just, deal with just, Woody Hayes? Just, you know, you didn't, you didn't ask for special privileges with <laughs> Coach Hayes. He's, whatever he told you, you just did. Things were a little different back then. Well, great to see the number 69 back in Scarlet. Here's the run. Only left across the 25 and the pile pushes up near the 30 near the first down marker. A gain of 10. And Mason played here late 60s early 70s and was an assistant coach. 78 through 85. And became the head man at Kent State. Took off the hat. April of 1986. Coach there a couple of seasons. We're moving on to Kansas. Win Mason, one of our alumni spotlight. We don't get an opportunity to do that for you. So. You know, in theory, one year I beat Ohio State. Did I ever tell you that? Explain how that went. Well, we beat Miami of Ohio. You being Kent State. Kent State. That's right. Okay. Miami of Ohio beat LSU. Mm -hmm. LSU beat Ohio State. Therefore. You're trying to explain through all that convoluted explanation that your that's, team could have beaten Ohio State. That's that the year. closest I could come. <laughs> right up the middle. Gain of five. 
Hayward picks up the yards for Kent State. I can see where I used to live from here. This vantage point over here, Mark. But from everything that you have shown and told me here, campus and the town in general has changed significantly since you used to spend a lot of time here. All right, those those are some dorms off to the right, correct? Yeah, right to the right, right to the right over here. That was my 109 Park Hall. That's where I lived. Yeah, way right down to the bottom, first floor. Running left across the 40, first down to midfield. A lot of things happen on this campus. A lot of construction. A lot of things changing. Quarterback Magazoo with the carry there. Okay, there are the dorms. Now there's some construction off here to the left. I notice. See the crane? Yeah. What is this building right here? I don't know what that building is. I was ever in that building. Makes sense because that's the addition to the Ohio State Library. Oh. <laughs> 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 a lot of football well, time, is, not much that, library time. That under explains Woody it. <laughs> First down carry. Haywood getting the carry, and Magazoo's getting most of the playing time now. Look at the rushing yards. Kent State's been moving it on the ground. Ohio State has gotten the big play. Punt return for touchdown and interception return for touchdown as well. Up near the 46 yard line. Haywood on the carry. We'll join host Mike Hall to find out what's happening on campus as your school preps for the big game. Get up to the second reports and see campuses battle it out to determine who has the best football atmosphere. Friday night tailgate. Fridays at 8 Eastern, 7 Central only here on the Big Ten Network. Third down and seven for Kent State at the 46 yard line of the Buckeyes. Play fake, Magazoo. Still on his feet, throws it down the far sideline and right along the sideline, incomplete. The intended receiver was Lenaric Muldrow. And it's fourth down. Muldrow, a redshirt freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, trying to straddle the line. After the Magazoo throw from the lefty. That's close. Trying to keep those toes in or at least get, get one foot in. Good look at it there, but maybe that left toe was out just as he got complete control. Hartline hit right as he accepts the punt at the 10 yard line. They wish they would have had that coverage before. They were in a tight punt formation, got down there and Hardline couldn't get going. 45 yard punt, no return. Well, Doug Martin's Golden Flashers are going to get back to conference play next week. And we have seen the elements of a football team that can do a lot of damage in that conference. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I'm impressed with Kent State. Um, I like the quarterback. We said that coming in. Um, Jarvis is an awful good running back. Tough, you know, they have to have tough kids that play hard. Robbie Schoenhoff, the quarterback, hands off Brandon Sane, met by Williams. It's maybe a yard. High State didn't have much chance in that. They stunted and they had more defensive people than High State had offensive offers. You make the tackle, there'll be no game. We knew that Kent was going to play a lot of players. Then you get ahead like High State is, and now. Jim Trestle and the Ohio State coaching staff, they can liberally substitute also. Second down to nine. Play fake, shown off to the near sideline, complete at the 15 and up across the 20. Gain of 10. By Brandon Smith. Now look at our Suzuki way of life honor roll, and it's one of the team captains for Ohio State, Kirk Barton, the history major, with an impressive GPA. Impressive offensive lineman, too. He's one of those guys that's a 300 plus guy, but you see him in person, he doesn't look that way. And he's good, good solid weight, well proportioned guy. Massillon, Ohio, Perry High School. On first down, draw, same. Wanted to go outside, cuts it back in. 
you know, in the state of Ohio, when you start talking about the Maslin Tigers or Glen, Glen Oak, uh, where Hart Line's from, or Camp McKinley, that's Stark County. There's a lot of good football players come from Stark County, Ohio. That's the end of the third quarter. Ohio State with a 35 0 lead at halftime. They've added 10 in the third. Fifteen minutes to go here in Columbus on what's turned out to be a gorgeous day. 45 0. Third ranked team in the land, Ohio State leading Kent State. And on second down and six, first play of the fourth quarter. Sane pushes the pile across the 30. He has a first down, it appears. Up near the 33 yard line. Well, look, look at the coaches poll top 10. Now, you're seeing the top 10 in order on the left, and then on the right, their preseason rank. And what I think is very interesting, you've got three teams there that were not ranked in the top 25, not only the top 10, BC, South Florida, and Oregon. LSU's been right about one or two all season. Cal's made a big jump, and Ohio State, preseason 11th, still unbeaten at number three. First and ten. Sane puts it outside. Big hole. May go. Gets thrown down. At the 37-yard line. Jack Williams was the last one that had a chance and kept him from going the distance, but not before he goes 30 yards. Mark, the last two running plays that they ran, different than they ran the first three quarters, they run with a wide zone with offensive line and pulling to the outside. A little different blocking scheme and obviously very effective. Well, before that run, Ohio State had a total of 49 rushing yards for the game. They get 30 right there in one crack from Sane. Well, it doesn't surprise me. They're not happy with that statistic through three quarters, and that's why they're going to work on their running game right now. First down from the 38. Sane. Again, 31. you saw both linemen pull to the outside. And I think they'll continue to run that play unless Kent makes an adjustment. Same picks up seven more. Now let's look at the notable remaining games for the top three teams right now. LSU has Kentucky tonight. Still big games in the SEC for them, obviously. For Cal, the one that really sticks out, of course, is the trip to USC. And for Ohio State, Penn State next week up in Happy Valley, but Wisconsin and Illinois here in the finale in Ann Arbor. Second down and two. And off up to the 25 yard line. Mark Marcus what, Williams. Mark, what you're saying is there's a lot of football to be played yet. There's a lot of football, and one team we didn't see on that last graphic, though, was South Florida. And they're really an interesting football team because they're one that many pundits knew were going to have a good season this year coming in, and they're living up to the expectations, and they may throw a monkey wrench in this national title run. Yeah, probably better than advertised. They're a good, solid football team that just continues to win. First down now at the 24-yard line of the Golden Flashes. Williams up to the 21. Morrell with the stop. All right, let, let's let's talk hypotheticals here. What if South Florida winds up the regular season unbeaten? They are one of two unbeaten teams. Maybe there's a one loss Big Ten team. Maybe there's another one loss SEC Big 12. Whatever the matter, whatever the case may be, does South Florida get in? Are you asking me? I'm asking you. <laughs> we got a BCS controversy. That's what we have, and I don't think they get in. Now the first BCS poll will come out the tail end of this weekend. Williams. Inside the 20 forward progress will get him to the 19 a gain of a couple. I'm not saying they shouldn't get in. I'm just saying I don't think they get in. All depends who that one loss or who those one loss teams are. A lot of variables. And who they lost to, let's face it. A lot of variables are going to play out over the next month or so. Don't forget about the controversy last year out of this league. So there have been two Big Ten teams <laughs> going to the national championship game. Yes. <laughs> I'm partial. <laughs> Third down and four. Williams. Still pushing the pile. He's going to get it right near the marker. He picks up four or five. 
And his spot will tell us, yes, he has the first down. Yeah, this last drive is just a good old, old fashioned Ohio State. Three yards in a cloud of dust, and the games took two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are gone. Here's Woody Hayes. Just over 11 minutes to go, and another carry for Marcus Williams. I'm going to turn that corner up to the 12. Will Johnson to stop? This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. You know, Mark, what Ohio State has done to this great old stadium. What a great venue. It was always a, a tough place to play. It is really a tough place to play now. Second down to nine at the Golden Flashes 12 and shown off from the shotgun. Incomplete at the three. Albert Dukes, the one wearing number five. There are some double numbers that we're seeing really on both teams. Whereas Czech will wear, wears five on the defensive side, but that's Dukes. And it's third down to nine. Doug Martin, the head coach of Kent State. His team's down 45 zip, but has he seen some good things today? Yeah, he saw some good things. He's thinking about some of the mistakes. Uh, I think right now he's thinking about next week. Let's just get this game over with and move on. Sean Hoff saying a loss. He loses three. Kent State back to the Mac after this week. And Doug Martin's Golden Flashes see Bowling Green, Central Michigan. They have to go to Northern Illinois and Temple to finish at home at Dick Stadium against Buffalo. Unless things have changed, that's a long road trip to Northern Illinois because you go there by bus. And we attempt the 32-yarder. And another one good. Victorious. 9.42 to go in Columbus, 48-0 Buckeyes. Over 105,000 in the crowd today at the Horseshoe here in Columbus on what's really turned out to be a beautiful day. 48-0 Buckeyes, Andrew Good handles the kickoff. Be picked up by McBride at the 20, across the 40. Ushered out at the 48-yard line, and McBride returns the kick 29 yards. An update from the field again. Here's Rob Harley. All right, guys, standing here with a familiar face in Columbus, Ohio, former Buckeye Anthony Gonzalez, current Indianapolis Colts. And we talked with the uh, Hardline and Robo, uh, Ryan Robisky, this week, and uh, they said, man, I'm so glad that Gonzo is gone. Uh, wh what have you seen from these guys' growth as this season progresses? I think they're, they're just taking advantage of the opportunities. It's only a matter of time for them. Um, yeah, they've, they've always been talented since they got here, so it's just a matter of getting the touches. What about Trestle's game plan of going deep? I mean, you never caught that many deep balls. No, I didn't catch any. I didn't catch any deep balls. But um, no, it's you know, it's uh, one of those things. They're doing what Todd's comfortable with, and it, it seems like Todd's comfortable with throwing the deep ball, which is very exciting for everybody, really. Now, next week, I know, I understand it's your first Monday night game against Jacksonville. Yours personally, what uh, what kind of feelings are going through your mind right now? I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I just feel like you know you've seen Monday Night Football your whole life. It'll it'll just kind of be cool just to be out there, I guess. Well, good luck next week, and uh, good uh, to see you back on the sideline, guys. Back to you, Rob Anthony. Thanks very much. Pass complete at the 47-yard line to Vandering. Hey, Rob. Let me tell you something. If you think Robisky and Hartline are glad to see Don Zogo, how about those? Big Ten coaches, <laughs> they're dancing in the street. First team all Big Ten last year, Anthony Gonzalez. And yes, the Indianapolis Colts have an off week this week. Like so many NFL stars, when they get a chance, an off week. A lot of them flood back to the campuses. Great to see Anthony Gonzalez here. Magazine still has it. He's dropped at the 49-yard line for a loss of three. Thaddeus Gibson. 
Redshirt freshman from Euclid, Ohio, on the tackle for the Buckeyes. Wow. I tell you what, that's. Looks like Woody. An amazing likeness. That's unbelievable right there. I got chills for a Did second. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Expecting the next words to be Mason, my office, now. The punt return drops immediately at the 13 yard line. 7.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Glenn Mason, his heart's beating even more rapidly right now. <laughs> wow. 7.45 to go in the fourth quarter here at Columbus. All number three Buckeyes leading Kent State by a score of 48 to nothing. Buckeyes have possession, first to 10 from their own 14 yard line. Dylan Hoff, hands off. So they keep it on the ground. Up here in the booth with us, Mark Neely, Glenn Mason, president to all. Or Friend to all college presidents, Glenn Mason, and we have the <laughs> president. Absolutely, I love this State. guy. <laughs> Gordon Gee is with us, and it must be fun being president of this great institution. You look out on this tremendous venue, and a big lead for your kids out there today. Yeah, it is. It's a fabulous place. You know, I was president of this university from 1990 to 1997, and I took a 10-year sabbatical, went off to uh, Brown and then to uh, Vanderbilt, and I'm back for just 13 days. This is my 13th day, and it's a uh, it's a magnificent sight, isn't it? It really is quite remarkable. Probably the greatest venue in college sports right here, and uh, I'm privileged to be part of it. Well, Dr. Dr. Gee, we've been talking about what the improvements in the stadium. I mean, it is the best venue that, that we've seen. And I, I guess it'd be correct in saying that you were the president when this decision was made to do this. I was, and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of that. You know, we had to make certain that we preserved the traditions of the stadium, and all of the uh, and all of the things that were so important to the fans. And still, we had to uh, make uh, make the, the stadium uh, fan friendly, and that was not easy. As you know, our colleagues uh, to the north, Michigan, are having some real struggles because you had these historic stadiums, and then how do you preserve the history and still uh, improve them? But they did it with this one with great uh, charm and. Uh, Grace and it still uh, it worked very very well. And it still feels the same as when I was here in 1990. You know, Dr. Gee, being a high State alumnus, I question the uh, the intelligent decision when you left to go to Brown and Vanderbilt. I didn't know that you intended to come back. That was <laughs> that was short sightedness on my yeah, part. Yeah, let me tell you something. It was all a grand scheme. Uh, there's no doubt about it. No, it's uh, you know it's highly unusual to do what I've done. Um, but the reason I'm back is uh, because. Uh, Obviously, first they offer me a job. <laughs> you and I understand. That's it. I yeah, you're only as good as your last ball game, my friend, and it's me too. But uh, oh, you had to bring that up, didn't you? Yeah, I, well, as I tell, as I tell everyone, as I tell everyone, to most people, it's a football game. To me, it's my budget running up and down the field. So, uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, you know, to come back to this place, which does, and, and and as a graduate, you know that. I mean, you may leave, you may go other places, but there is a scarlet and gray thread that does uh, attach to your heart, and that's certainly happened to me. Well, I've been taking a lot of grief for my tie because it's maize and blue, but I did coach Kent State, so I've, yeah, I'm I'm trying to be impartial today. Yeah, I know. In fact, in fact, you're being too daggone impartial. We, <laughs> we're not certain if we're letting you out of this stadium. <laughs> you don't want to trade your bow tie for my tie, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. Let me tell you something. President Keith, thanks so much for coming up with us. Thank you. Big lead with 6:08 to go. 48 nothing, Buckeyes. Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee. By YieldGuard VT Triple, the yield protection system. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. 6.08 left here in the fourth quarter. Some of the folks departing the horseshoe, but there is still an issue here, and that is the Ohio State defense wanting to pitch the shutout, but Kent State as their best starting field position at the 31 yard line of Ohio State and no gain on the first carry. You know Mark we had a couple guests on from Ohio State in the spirit of fairness a little um, Kent State trivia you know names of the three coaches that uh, famous college football coaches that played and graduated from Kent State. I can address that. John Brown, by the way, the new quarterback, as you saw for Kent State. 
across the 25 yard line. We're going to get back to that trivia question, but first let's get an update. See how the fighting align. Well, let's catch you up on Illinois and Iowa potential upset brewing. Jake Christensen to Brandon Myers, 11th touchdown toss of the year for Christensen. Illini down four, but driving mark. Dave, thanks very much. Just when you think you got the conference figured out, guess what? Iowa, Kinnick Stadium, trying to pull what would be an upset even on their home field at, at Kinnick Stadium. And off Haywood. Up to the 21 yard line. Well, to address your previous trivia question, the one that immediately comes to mind is Nick Saban. There's one. There's one. I'm going to have some issues coming up with the second. Repeat your trivia question. <laughs> Three college football coaches that uh, played and graduated from Kent State. State. No, no, it's three for you. not bad. Well, yeah. Clock rolling, and here's a fourth down and one. Golden Flash is trying to keep this drive alive. He keeps it and has the first down. You give up? I do. Who are the remaining coaches? I thought you would have got the first one, Lou Holtz. Well, Lou Holtz. And Gary Pinkle of Missouri. And Saban. You got that one. First down for the Golden Flashes. Can they punch one in here? Four minutes to go. Brown out of the shotgun. That's going to be thrown for a loss. Here's a look at our yield guard VT Triple Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. And we saw him today. Jimmy Chekwa. Ten tackles last week at Purdue. He's the first Buckeye freshman player of the week since 1996. Congratulations. Cindy Chekwa. Loss of one, second down and 11. 48 nothing, Ohio State, Kent State. And the running game getting ground to a halt there. Well, they brought the corner blitz, anticipating the run by Kent State. Corner made the play. Here's your bonus question. Oh boy. Bob Enfield, graduate of Kent State, is the founder of what very famous casual clothing company? I'm not sure, but whoever it is is going to get a nice free plug on national television. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer would be? Tommy Bahama. Third and 13. Brown. Is it complete? Yes. But only at the 17 yard line. A reception by Aaron Robinson. Now the Ohio State defense, and of course, none of the second teamers are in, but they want to keep up that. They only allowed 43 points on the season coming in. The fans are upset. 34 yard field goal attempt. Reed puts it up and good and Kent State is on the scoreboard and the booze are out. Nate Reed with the field goal and it's 48 to 3. Eleventh field goal of the year for Reed a sophomore. Well the fans don't like that decision because there goes the shutout for the high state defense but the way Kent State played, and they came down there. Why not kick the field goal? Hang your hat on something. You didn't get shut out in the horseshoe. 2:36 still to play here in the horseshoe. This was a seven-nothing game in favor of Ohio State at the end of the first quarter. Well, we mentioned you go back. Uh, I said in the first quarter, Kent State was down seven-nothing. But if it was a boxing match and you're scoring it, you'd say advantage, Kent State. Well, what really turned things was Brian Hartline's 90-yard punt return. Inside the first couple of minutes of the second quarter. And Ohio State's been off and running since, and Doug Martin's team has not only had that special team problem, but an interception return for touchdown by Donald Washington. And Ohio State 
started pouring it on. They're up 48-3 now with 2.36 to play. Reed who kicked the field goal also will kick it off for the Golden Flashes. Well, it's a good payday for the Golden Flashes and good experience for these this team and they'll take something from this and hopefully grow and continue in the Mid-American race. Ray Small lets it roll and picks it up at the five. 15 20. Cut down at the 23 yard line. If he got through that last hole, he had a lot more green. 19 yard return. A big stop of the game, our Yield Guard VT big stop of the game. Vernon Golston, Cooper Tires. Big stop of the game. Vernon Golston. Mark, it's been one of those games, especially on high State defense with some of their big names. You haven't been calling them today. We called his right. name Laurenitis. We haven't heard very much about him, and that doesn't mean that he played poorly, just one of those games. First to 10 for the 24. And the carry. Minimal gain. Christian. Casey Christian, who's a redshirt freshman from Kitts Hill, Ohio, Rock Hill High School. Well, the great percentage of players on this Buckeye team are from the state of Ohio. Great high school programs produce a lot of major college players every year. High State can't take them all. That's why the Mid-American Conference is such a good conference. Clock running, under two minutes to go. Second down, Christian cuts it back towards the far side. Up to the 36 yard line. And he has a first down. Well, our Big Ten football continues next Saturday. Northern Illinois travels to Madison and will take on the Badgers. And North Dakota State will face Minnesota. Next Saturday, pregame coverage starts one hour before kickoff. North Dakota State, that's a big game for them. They play hard there in Minneapolis. That's a big game. They, they'll bring a lot of people down there. There's a lot of Minnesota guys on that team. They've only lost one game the last two years, and that was last year. And I was the coach today. They outplayed us, out coaches. We were lucky to win. Minnesota leading Northwestern today, 35 21, fourth quarter. Making sure he has the ball and he finds a hole up to the 45 yard line. And there's 10 minutes to go in the fourth in Michigan, all over Purdue. 48 to 7, Michigan leading there. Purdue. After a big game for them last week at home, being beaten by these Buckeyes have not recovered this week. Well, they were putting up a lot of points, but their bubble has been burst the last two weeks. Joe Tiller won't be happy. Second down and two. We're inside the final minute here in Columbus. Showing off, lets that play clock get down as far as he can. And out of room across midfield to the 47 yard line of Kent State. That'd be the last play. Casey Christian picks up the first down, and that should do it. Now Jim Tressel's Ohio State Buckeyes, third ranked team, gets the win over Kent State 48 to 3. The Golden Flashes fall to 3 and 4. Buckeyes now 7 0 on the season. Well, we mentioned a number of times Kent State was very respectable with exception of a couple of mistakes early in the game. Now when you look at the statistics, you're going to say, well, High State's running the ball a little bit better. They did not run that ball better when this game was in question. They weren't, ran better at the end of the game when they put the subs in, and um, Kent State had their second and third team in. So I'm sure that Coach Tressel will say, hey, with the half the season to go, we better get this running game going. Big plays, big part of the game. Ohio State wins it 48-3. But got the 90-yard punt return from Brian Hartline early in the second quarter. And then that really seemed to be where everything just changed for Kent State. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is you, you take the enthusiasm out of them and you know, they come in all excited and they're playing good and they start thinking, hey, these guys aren't as good as we thought. We can hang in there. A couple big plays and you think, oh boy, they're good. 
Eugene Jarvis, the big running back, big as far as the numbers he puts up. Five foot, five inch tall, Eugene Jarvis, 16 carries for 84 yards today, but we certainly saw what makes him so good. He's a good football player. We knew that, and you know, we have joked around what does a good football player look like, and they say he's 5'5", five, five, he's probably 5'3". I don't care how tall he is. That guy is a tough player. He moves his feet, and, you know, let's face it, they're going against a defense, uh, one of the top uh, ranked defenses in the country, and he did a fine job. Updated U.S. Bank Big Ten standings with this win. Ohio State now 7-0 overall and 4-0 in conference play. And again, Illinois is on the ropes at this very moment in Iowa City. And actually, the finals just come in. Illinois gets beaten 10-6. So Illinois is now 3-1 and 5-2 and and overall. And the number 19 fighting Illini get beat on the road today. Well, I didn't see that one coming. I really thought Illinois had it going, and uh, that surprised me. Check down to the field one more time. Here's Rob Harley. All right, guys, standing here with Brian Hartline, one of the players of the game. Now, you, that's your first punt return for a touchdown. What did that feel like? You, had, you showed a little speed on there. Yeah, you know, uh, it is my first uh, punt return for a touchdown. But, uh, uh, you know, I think my team was good. It was a good play. But, uh, yeah, it felt good. It felt good to get one for the team. Now, where is your mom? Is she on the road right now going to Kentucky? Yeah, mom's down in uh, down Kentucky ready to watch the LSU and Kentucky take off. So uh, my dad came up for this game, so they had to split it up. All right, well, good game today. Good luck to your brother tonight. And, guys, back to you. Rob, thank you very much. One touchdown reception, but he also had a punt return for a touchdown. And this really one of the keys, if not the key play of the game. Early in the second quarter, Number 84, Doug Worthington will come into your screen, lay the block, and he's totally free down the sideline. And Brian Hartline's 90-yard punt return, that came early in the second quarter. The point after made it 14-0, and Ohio State put it in cruise control from there. Harmon, Ohio, part of the post-game ritual here at the Horseshoe. going to do it from here in Columbus. For Rob Harley, Glenn Mason, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Ohio State wins it 48-3. Now to the studio and Dave Russell.